Hello and welcome to Be a Tier, the German Engineer. Explains, oxygen not included. Today, we're back with part 4 of our Explain Every Vent, Geyser and Volcano series, and I have three different ones for you. First of all, we have the hot polluted oxygen vent. Then we have the oil reservoir, which once again uses our wonderful Escher waterfall. And last but not least, we have the infectious polluted oxygen vent in two different versions. So let's just jump right into it and see how that works out for us. And here we are, as promised, with our hot polluted oxygen vent. So let's take a look. First of all, let's turn the overlay back on and then let's pause the game and see what we're doing here. First of all, our F2 overlay. Let's take a look at the power. We have here once again our dev tool and we are powering with it everything that we're using. Up here in the top, I just have an auto sweeper and a conveyor loader that just brings us to sand in. Where exactly your sand is coming from? Now that is up to you. I just spawned some in right here. Usually you would have your dupes, load them in or use some sort of automation whatever you want to do you just need to get it into this chamber in one way or another in this chamber here we have a gas pump another conveyor loader we have an auto sweeper and four deodorizers those are highly highly important and then of course we need to get rid of the heat so we need a thermo aqua tuner as well as a steam turbine preferably sitting in hydrogen but really any other gas will do next of all let's take a look at our overlay for our piping our piping is pretty straightforward as usual we just have an insulated liquid pipe coming along then we switch over to a radiant liquid pipe go all the way through the chamber right here then come back down while we're at it we're cooling down our steam turbine and back over here we're coming into our thermo aqua tuner with our standard setup so our loop is continuously running no matter if the thermo aqua tuna is running or not with our steam turbine we're just going to come down and come over as close to our thermo aqua tuna as possible you can build this chamber one tile further over if you want to and not block one of those inlets here with your liquid vent but honestly it really doesn't matter that much next let's take a look at the hot polluted oxygen vent itself what does it actually do it emits polluted oxygen 281.2 grams per second at 500 degrees celsius it erupts for 333 seconds every 620 seconds so about half a cycle every cycle and it is pretty active 30.9 cycles out of every 55.4 so this is a pretty potent vent that can give you a lot of oxygen very quickly it's coming out really really hot as we can see so we need to cool it down one way or another and i think this here is the best and easiest most straightforward setup so what is actually happening? And it is erupting right now. So let's take a look in our pipe overlay. We're coming in with about 10 degrees. On the top, we're coming out with about 15. And then we are coming down to our steam turbine, cooling that down as well. And at the end, we are at about 17 degrees. Over here, the liquid pipe thermal sensor is set up to 18 degrees. In my case, you can always set it up to whatever you want. And what do we actually do here in our F4 overlay? So the hot polluted oxygen is coming out. We are feeding it into those four deodorizers. Four deodorizers are being fed, of course, with sand. They need five watts each of power as well. And on the top, we have wonderful, clean and also cooled down oxygen. Here we have an Atmo sensor. I've sent it to above a thousand grams. You can really, again, set it to whatever you want. You can even vacuum this thing out entirely if you want to. Doesn't really make a difference. As as long as you make sure you don't get any polluted oxygen in here in my case of course i built an infinite storage we already have 1600 kilograms in here so this thing here has been running for a little bit let's put it this way but it's also only one tile it has no pump built in or anything like that this is literally just a placeholder you can feed it straight into your base or do with it whatever your base requires then on top of that we have the auto sweeper in here as well as a conveyor loader and all we are doing when we take a look into our overlay or conveyors we are literally just coming straight out and dropping the clay down. There is a slightly better version of this here, a more automated version. You will see this in a little while. It can be implemented here as well. I didn't build it for a hot polluted oxygen vent since I just wanted to show you what it looks like to get the clay out. But you can also feed it right into a kiln and get wonderful ceramic. This is a simple setup for a hot polluted oxygen vent. Literally does not get a hell of a lot simpler than this. And it gives you a wonderful amount of oxygen almost for free. All it requires is a little bit of power because it is unfortunately not self-sustainable. Let's move on to the next one. Over here, we have the oil reservoir set up. So once again, let's take a quick look at it. All we need is a tiny little bit of power. The power is coming in. And of course, it's uh, powering our oil well, as well as our gas pump, as well as our liquid pump. And that is literally all that's needed. In our F6 overview, we can see all we need is water. We need to get water in here. Doesn't really matter what the temperature is or anything like that. I'm using a def liquid pump for it. Wherever your water comes from, that is up to you as usual. 
On the left here, I have built an Atmo suit just to make it a little bit easier. That is really not needed. The Duke can just come in and go back out, coming in and go back out. You just need to make sure that you keep this environment in here natural gas. We do not want anything else but natural gas in here or it will mess with your infinite storage if you have an infinite storage. You can of course feed it directly into natural gas generators or whatever else you want to do with it. Our actual waterfall setup once again I just put some chlorine here some carbon dioxide right there and the setup is pretty straightforward. Just one tile beneath the neutronium we have two spaces then one insulated tile here, one insulated tile there, and then manual airlocks all around with a liquid pipe in the middle. And currently there are what, uh, 2000, 1300? It's kind of jumping around right now. It's a bunch of it. It hasn't been running that long, but this system here literally cannot die. There is nothing that could potentially break other than introducing a different gas in here. That is, of course, what you will try to avoid as much as you can. So what does it actually look like when we have reached our back pressure and we need to release it? So let's just spawn in a dupe real quick right here. Here. and then let's say in here we're gonna go all the way down to 40 percent doesn't matter re is coming we're gonna turn up the speed a little bit puts on the suit comes in here the pump will stop and the pressure will be released the pump will turn on i set the atmos center to 500 gram once again it really does not matter whatever you prefer and once the back pressure is released the oil wheel will start back up and once again immediately starts to fill up our infinite storage over here this is a really simple and straightforward setup. Not a hell of a lot is required in terms of technology. Not a hell of a lot is required in terms of dupe labor. I would definitely recommend building it like this since it is a really easy way to get access to oil. Let's move on to the next one. And over here we have our infectious polluted oxygen vent. And as you can see, the basic setup on the left is exactly the same as our hot polluted oxygen vent. The main difference is over here. So what is it? Why do we need it? And what does it do? Let's take a look at it. First of all, let's get some clean. That should happen here any second. Let me turn up the speed here just for a second so we can actually get that clay over there. And there we have it. Wonderful. Now we have a tiny piece of clay right there. I am going to take a look first of all into our F2 overlay. We have power, of course, coming over here for an extra auto sweeper, an extra conveyor loader and an extra conveyor shutoff. Then our railing system is also pretty easy and straightforward. We are just coming around here and out of there. Our conveyor shutoff is hooked up to a conveyor rail germ sensor because we want our clay to have no germs on it when we come out of here. So what are we doing? Our auto sweeper picks up the clay puts it into the conveyor loader and then the conveyor rail germ sensor will tell us if we have above one germ. If we have above one germ this here will turn green and therefore we are going around in a loop in this basin of chlorine. In chlorine we are just gonna cycle it around and around. It will have to go a few rounds because the way is very very short but that is fine. There is no problem with that. It can just cycle here 10-15 times and then we're gonna drop it over here when it is germ free. So let's take a look in our germ overlay. We can see all the germs in here and all the germs in here as well. What are we going to do with these germs? We'll see in a second. Important is this clay right here. It is currently 6,326 germs. So let's pick it up, put it into here, and then let's cycle it through. And in our germ sensor here, 1,200, another cycle, 700, another cycle, 400, and another cycle. We are down to 300. And we're just going to cycle it around and around and around up until the point that is germ free. And when that happens, we will just drop it right there. It's really easy and straightforward and I only put a thousand grams of chlorine in here. That is really not a hell of a lot. With a normal vent, we can increase that to 2000 grams and that is exactly what I just did. So if we increase it, the whole process should go faster, which it of course does. So when we take a look into here, 800, 3000, and we're going down. We're just going around and around. You can also extend your way here a little bit if you wanted to. It is all possible. You can build the room bigger however you want to do it. But it will work like this here forever. There will be no problem at all. The only thing as always that you need is plenty of sand. So what are we going to do with our oxygen? Let's see. Our oxygen comes along this pipe and then we snake it along here. It doesn't have to look like this, but this here is definitely going to be long enough to work. Here I have gas pipe germ sensors and all of them are set to below one, below one, below one, below one. So every time you see a green one right there, it shows us that we have no germs. All we're doing is we're cycling it through the pipe and the germs will naturally die off on the oxygen inside of the pipe. That is all it takes. Literally just like that. But we can decrease this pass here quite drastically. When we take a look here, the liquid pipe thermosensor is now set to 25 degrees on purpose. 
we can decrease this here all the way down to let's say negative five degrees negative five degrees is okay because negative five and again negative 14 from our thermo echo tuna makes negative 19 and with negative 19 we will never have a problem because our polluted water does not freeze until negative 20. So let's let this run here for about a minute or so on full speed and then we should see what that looks like. And it has been running now for about a half a cycle or so. Let's take a look in here and our polluted oxygen and our polluted water inside the pipes is at negative 15 degrees and up here in the top we are at negative 13. We soak up a little bit of heat of course from our polluted oxygen that's coming out of our wind. So let's see what it does to the top here. Ah wouldn't you look at that. Only the first sensor has a couple germs left. Basically nothing. Three, two, one, two. It's literally nothing at all that is left. So right here, we will definitely and 100% be safe. Let's take a look. Let's build another one. Let's copy the settings over there, just like this. Settings applied. No more germs right over here. So we just cut down this entire way here drastically just by cooling it down even more. If that is viable for whatever you're planning on doing with it, that is up to you, of course. But I'm just giving you options here. Let's move on to the modified version of this setup. And here we have the modified version of the last setup just with an automated kiln here on the right. And I actually just realized I built it on accident out of thermium. The head is not needed. Copper is more than good enough for what we are doing here. So let's take a look how it works. First of all, our power overlay as usual. We need an auto sweeper. We need a conveyor loader and we need a conveyor shut off. A total of 250 watts. Not a big deal. In here we will need some coal. I just dropped the coal in. This entire thing is five wide. You can just build it six wide and right here in this spot or somewhere in a similar spot you can just build another conveyor chute and feed in your coal from wherever you get your coal from. Next up is the overlay for our pipes and of course instead of going straight up right here we are actually coming to the right and looping it a little bit through this room here as well because we need to cool down the ceramic that we are getting out of the kiln. So how does this setup here work? We have our coal on the right and we are dropping in the ceramic on the left. Our kiln is in the middle and when we take a look for ceramic we need 100 kilograms of clay and 25 kilograms of coal and we are getting 100 kilograms of ceramic out of it. That is a pretty decent setup right here. Once we drop it in there the auto sweeper will pick it up, put it into this conveyor loader and put it along this rail right here. Let's take a look in the rail overlay so we can actually see this. We're putting it in here, coming along the rail, going through the water on the bottom and here we have a conveyor rail thermal sensor that controls this conveyor shutoff. So once this shutoff here is on, which is in this case here above 30 degrees, you can set it once again to whatever you want. It will just take a little bit longer or not quite as long to cool it down. We will just loop it around until it has reached the desired temperature. Once it has reached the desired temperature, we drop it out on the right. Above here, I have once again chlorine, this time around 10 kilograms. All this is possible. You can easily fill this here up with 10 kilograms of chlorine in the game without any cheats or exploits or whatever you want to call it. Just like that. All this here is absolutely possible. And on the right, we are getting out wonderful ceramic, hundreds of kilograms of it at a nice reasonable temperature, whatever we prefer. So let's actually speed it up here for a second and see if we can get enough clay in here so we can actually make some ceramic. Here we are making ceramic with our kiln and the ceramic is in. We're putting it into the conveyor loader. The conveyor po loader puts it onto the rail. It drives along here. Let's see what temperature it has on the first go around here in a second. And we are at about 75 degrees roughly. Let's uh, speed it up a little bit and see what happens on a second go around. We are down to 69 degrees. And on the third go around, we are down to 63 degrees and so on and so forth. And we're just going to let this here run up until the point where it has reached our desired 30 degrees. The kiln here should not be able to make another batch before this one here has completely left it. So let's take a look if that is a true statement. We're going to speed up the game and we will see when it leaves. And it is leaving right now. We're getting wonderful ceramic out here at 28.2 degrees. Now we have 800 kilograms. Isn't that wonderful? Just as simple as that. And once again, here on top, I have built the exact same setup for our actual oxygen over here, 447 kilograms. So this one here has also been running for a tiny little bit of time. And once again, the third one here is a little bit iffy, but the fourth one is 100% germ free. And the fifth one is just there for the fun of it, really. So it looks a little bit better. Yeah, this is the simple setup. Once again, you can control the oxygen with your temperature. You can make this way here a hell of a lot shorter or you can make it longer, whatever fits your needs. This is a very simple setup to get basically oxygen for free, just cost a little bit of power, and on top of that, you will make wonderful ceramic as well. 
But with that, all I have left to say is thank you very much for watching. If you enjoy the content, please subscribe to the channel, leave a like on the video and comment down below. Have you maybe learned something? I would really like to know. Or do you have something for me to learn? A better setup, a better mousetrap. I am always interested. And with that, I say thank you and peace.